So this is first and second place. Look at them weaving. Boom. He's done. So these guys actually take each other out. Wah! That was so close. You see that all kinds of nonsense happens. I decided to take the off track. Hello everybody, today we have Super Formula Lights. It's my first time really racing in this series. I did have four before, but we got a couple of things that we have to overcome today. One, we are at Monza, so we have to overcome first turn chicane, which is always very interesting in lower split Monza in uh, open wheel car, which takes damage very easily. Two, we kind of have to get over our fear of braking. I don't really have a lot of experience with braking in open wheel cars. They're very touchy. Definitely not a sports car, that's for sure. And three, in a field of 24, knowing how much damage can happen around Monza, we're definitely gonna have to navigate some lap cars, which is interesting in a lower split, but we'll see how things get along. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Let's get into it. Okay, starting off in Super Formula Lights, very interesting series. I, I knew it existed, but I, I didn't really get past F4. I didn't really like F4 that much, so uh, I was a bit apprehensive to try these. They're actually really good. Uh, a bit gutless down low, but not too bad. So this is the for first corner. We really have to be careful here. You see that all kinds of nonsense happens. I decided to take the off track and go around them. <laughs> it actually gives me a slowdown penalty at the same time doesn't really matter I'm already going slow especially in the first lap it really doesn't matter I would always advise anybody that especially a first corner Monza just kind of take your hits I mean like if it's gonna be a melee in the middle there and you're starting where I started 15th which is like super dangerous if you can't get in top four you're in a danger zone you're better off to start way far down and navigate your way through just take the Take the slip road uh, to the left of the first chicane. So we go, we qualified a measly 15th. I did get a qualifying lap in, but it just wasn't very good. Surprise, surprise, I'm not super duper fast here. I can put in 43s, and for the bottom split, that is fairly quick. But we're in the bottom split of three or four. So like, we're like right down at the bottom. Um, my, I rating and safety rating wasn't very good when they split road because it used to be that road and open wheel was all just road. Uh, now there's open wheel and road, and my 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 I rating and my uh, safety rating wasn't very good when they split those up. So I'm back down where I was many many weeks ago when I was in D class. So uh, first of all, so we're up to eight, we're heading up. For, through the first lap. Lots has happened. My goal for this race was just to have a fairly clean race. You can see over on the right hand side that we have four incident points through the whole race so it actually ends up going fairly well. I did try what there was I did a joker race before this so it's kind of a lie when I say this is my first race. This is my first race where I'm not just learning I'm actually trying to get around the track. I haven't done that many um, practice laps though. I want to say 50 or so, maybe 60, uh, plus a race. So maybe 90, maybe a little bit less than that. I find this chicane here to be the most challenging. It's the most different compared. I don't find the first chicane that difficult. As long as you're really easy in on the brakes and you take lots of time, you'll save all that time hitting the apexes than you would trying to be really late on the brakes. I find the second chicane. I don't know what it's called. Marilla della Fili Figio or something like that? I can't remember. Italians. I've been to Italy. Nice place. I've actually been to Monza. Um, fancy words. Let's put it like that. Okay, so there's several people on this track that were faster than. I would say not blazingly faster than anybody. I still make fairly routine mistakes uh, on some of the corners. I'm not perfect. I am getting more consistent. I'm certainly not brave. Uh, I can't remember. I watched somebody uh, doing this race 
and they were in top split. It kind of inspired me to um, give this a shot because it looked fun. They were doing, well, he wasn't, but the people around him were doing 141s, which is like beyond what I could ever hope to achieve. Um, really kind of surprised that I can actually see enough because, again, I'm partially blind, so that's why this channel is a thing. Um, I'm partially blind, so it's really hard for me to see at this speed. Mazda's not that much of a problem. I do have some issues. Um, the good thing about when you get into faster cars like this, you spend a lot less time in the corners. As long as you've gotten, eh, as long as you've gotten your breaking point right, and uh, you're kind of where you need to be as far as speed goes, the corner is going to come to itself. As long as you're not trying to push too hard. The real big difference, like I can do 143s, and a pretty fast lap is 142s, and then top top split is hitting 141s every once in a while. I don't think I can do that. I can't be that brave. And it, funny enough, it's not my vision, it's my braking ability. Here, I've gotten a lot better. Uh, you really have to take a wide corner. I try to give some advice on how to do this track better, but I don't really know as of yet. I have a pretty good idea of what to take and where to brake, but not really super duper fast. As we get further into the race, I... Oh, we get past there. I've let a lot of people by here. I'm being very cautious. I don't want to put myself into any sort of situations where I'm going to be a lot of time. You can see most of the field. We've got 11th through 18th or so that is just all over the place. And these are all people who have had incidents. They're slow. So, again, I'm not pushing them. I'm more worried about making this. On the bottom splits, and there is a strategy to bottom splits. If you can survive first corner and really kind of first lap, you can really do a lot of good in the bottom splits, or at least the bottom two splits. People make a lot of mistakes when they're this... I don't want to say bad, I want to say in a phase of learning. Uh, a lot of mistakes are made, and as long as you are consistent, you can usually outlast people. I've seen that, I've taken that strategy quite a few times. As I'm, I'm still racing in the MX-5s, and I'm doing a lot better, I'm actually out of bottom split in the MX-5s, and that's when you really, consistency really is come down. A lot of these tracks are new to me. I mean, I know Monza. I've been watching Formula One since the mid-90s. I think... Whatever year Damon Hill won, 97, 98, one of those years. That's when I started watching Formula One. They've been at Monza many, many times over those years. So I know Monza like the back of my hand. Um, I, I could name you know, most of the corners. I mean, Parabolica is coming up here. It's a great corner, really fun. Actually, considering how simple it is, one braking zone, one radius apex, it's actually quite difficult. You really have to get on the inside. If you run wide like this, you sh just you're done for. That's one of my off tracks there. And then that screws you for the whole straight. Again, I am not trying to push it. I'm actually just being really careful. I find the biggest difference between the MX-5 and even like the GT cars and the Super Formula Lights is it does take a long time for your tires to get to an operating temperature where you can be confident that things are going to happen properly. I also don't have very good control as far as steering on those uh, that first chicane. If you get it wrong, it's really jarring how far you have to go on the steering wheel to get it to actually turn. Oh, excuse me. I always yawn when I start recording. It's weird. Nervousness? Is yawning nervous? I thought that was only dogs. Anyway. Um, so you can see a lot of people putting in 43s. I haven't had a clean lap, so my 146 is not right. There's a 145 down there. Again, I'm having little issues here and there. I'm trying to push much too early for me. I'm going off track. People are going to start catching me. But I calm myself down. I'm a lot better when I don't have somebody riding up my butthole. So, again, I kind of just let this guy go. I'm not pushing him. I break super early. Just let him go. Not not interested. I'm not interested at all. Um, I'd rather finish 10th 
then have an accident and just ruin it, it really ruins your experience of the track and I found when we were at Road America that's my experience of that entire track it's just crashing out way too early okay so one quarter of the way eh, one third of the way through the race and doing quite well uh, in my opinion anyway I was hoping for a top 10 and we got there really early I don't think we were settled in to that particular position. If you're looking at times in the board, I really kind of deserve to be 12th when you look at my fastest time on the left, on the, just above me there. But I do get more and more consistent as time goes on. I'm actually still kind of learning here, so a lot of this is still just trying to get that consistency. I know where I should be braking and I know what gears I should be in. Um, getting that muscle memory in there. Now I did that other race that I did was yesterday. I found one of the biggest things is how your body remembers and how muscle memory is taught. You can see I'm still getting a little bit hot into there but enough that I can save myself. So how muscle memory works is you really do need to have a sleep cycle. Uh, if you're, I did one day at Road America where I burnt in like 10 hours of racing. It doesn't help, I didn't get any faster. Because you're not actually learning, you're just teaching your muscles what to do and then not having that REM sleep cycle to kind of remember what you did. So woke up today, waited a little bit, did some races in this, and then it felt good. felt really good. Actually, this is a recording, obviously, and then I did another race after that, and it was even better there. So these guys actually take each other out. Wah! That was so close. That's a very fast chicane. So <laughs> it was just kind of like, if he had a slid a little bit, you know, sorry, more this way, I would have been done for. So just lucky that we got through there. He actually kept on going, although I think he has some terminal damage. So that's two places. Back up into eighth. Kind of where we ended up after the first lap. So starting on this lap, again, not super duper clean anywhere. We started to put in 46s. Again, that is very slow. Uh, we were dodging mayhem there for a little bit of that. I started to get this corner a little bit easier. Learned to ride the curbs a little bit. I can ride them a little bit. I wouldn't say to make a habit of it. Again, not super duper fast, but again, that's not really the purpose of this is to be consistent so somebody actually dropped out so we're in seventh now I think somebody went into the pits we're seeing that attrition that I talked about happen I'm still not right into that corner I do get it good eventually I'm just tr I'm trying to break at the hundred board and I don't have the skill on the brakes to do that so as time goes on there's actually one of those little walls with the little orange bit on it, and it's just before the 100 board. That's where I end up breaking. Um, whether it's my reaction time and I just can't do it, or I'm just not comfortable in the brakes enough to, to do it in the right spots. Good drive in through there. I, I'm pretty good at that chicane. I'm actually good from turn 7-ish to the first chicane. I'm actually, I gain a lot of time on people there. What I explained, so 145.2. That's not great, not terrible though. So what I explained before is the uh, the car's a bit gutless down low, and not that it's really gutless. It's good. It has a fairly big turbo in it. I don't know what size engine's in this. It feels like a 1.6 liter, maybe 2 liter. Um, the turbo's quite big, uh, but it just doesn't really... Gear ratio? I can't tell. Uh, it doesn't feel like it had the revs. There's a, a rapid shifting that goes on down low, and it doesn't really feel like it has any guts down there. I don't feel... Oh. Excuse me. I don't feel like it has a lot of grunt. I've never got on the gas and felt the back end snap out. I think like really only once and the tires are really cold. That corner is difficult to do. 
difficult to do fast. Uh, I'm not sure if this is open setup. I left it in, I don't know very much. But, oh, that's not true. I know it's open setup. Because I changed my brake bias. It is 50, mid 50s forward and I put it more forward. Uh, I don't find any rotation issues, so I just like to have that extra biting in the front. Uh, I'm sure you can mess around with a lot of other stuff. I didn't. I just left it. I don't think I'm really... The MX-5, I can feel it. I can tell when I change things. Really, I'm only setting up the car for is it bumpy and is it not. Nothing really else. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I'm at the skill level where I could have noticed really anything in this. The only thing that I would do, especially for Monza, is take a bunch of wing out so you could go really fast in a straight line. I mean, I, I'm sure you could put a down 4C kind of thing for the chicanes, but really, where you're not gaining any time. Monza is a fast, fast, fast track. You really have kind of... So you have the main straight. After the chicane, that corner there is not really a corner. Um, after the first Lesmo, that straight there, it's not a super fast straight. Um, and then 7, really kind of in through 11. You break a little bit for 8, 9, 10, the second Lesmo, but I think that's what it's called. Uh, but I don't, uh, it's not a lot. You really only go down to 4th, and you're only doing that so that you can get good drive out. Um, so yeah, it's mostly straights. Even Parabolica is, for the most part, like the first, like, fifth of it, you're on the brakes and kind of waiting. Uh, but once you get to the apex, you're full on, so Parabolica is pretty quick as well. I imagine if you're in a Formula car, there's very little braking at all. Like, you see that, that's fast. <laughs> it's very fast through there. 180 kilometers an hour or something like that. That's not slow. I will say, even though these cars are fairly fast, 200, 150 miles an hour, 100, 250 kilometers an hour is no slouch, um, but Monza is a huge straight, and it still kind of feels, I don't know, it's boring the right word, but uh, I found myself drifting on the straight because I'm looking at other stuff. So 44.6, in my opinion, that's a fairly respectable time for the splits, and obviously for my safety rating, which is pretty low, definitely not the 1.3 or 4K that I'm at in the Mazda. Um, that's pretty quick. So, still in seventh. We're about two thirds away through the race. Now, what happens about now is um, people get comfortable. Uh, I don't know if it's a good thing that I'm not very comfortable. I know I can do 43s. Um, in my practice session, I did a 43.9. So, I know it's capable of doing it, and it's really how good I get that corner right there. Um, if it's good, then I have a good lap. If I don't get that corner good, then I don't have a good lap. Um, but other people are starting to, you can see, um, ooh, that was rough. Uh, Herrera? Herrera? It's not a dinosaur. I'm pretty sure that's a dinosaur. It's a 142.6, which is pretty quick. That's up there. Um, that's closer to the top split levels of speed. So he's going quick. You can notice that his I rating is not good though. So how do you not have I rating if you're that quick? Oh, you crash a lot. Hence his safety rating is quite low as well. So, um, so people are getting pretty confident now. I believe, I don't know when things start to get crazy. I think it's around 11 or 12. So you can see 1, 2, and 3 are very close to each other. 4 and 5 are very close to each other. And then me, 6 and 7, 7 being me, is uh, a little bit further back. And we don't have anybody really behind us. They've all taken a dump somewhere. So 8th is just crossing the start-finish right now. So that's pretty far back. So I'm feeling very comfortable. If I know that, re realistically, if I put in 44s, um, eighth isn't going to catch me. He wasn't fast enough. So you can see he's putting in 45 sevens was his last lap. So we're good. Uh, I would be ecstatic with seventh. Um, if you check my right hand tally over there, that's 
49 I rating, and at the time I think I only had three incident points, so I might have had Okay, this is uh, editing, Scott. Uh, I wanted to go back and look through this during um, the actual race. So uh, this is second place on lap 11, where we just finished off in the video. Up ahead is first. I just want to get this on film so we can understand how I gain those positions. So that's first place up ahead. He gets the Lesmo wrong. Boom, into the wall. Now he's passed. Great, that's wonderful. Let's go back into the new second and third. I'll go over this incident more at the end of the video, but I wanted to do it here just so we have some context to what's going on. So, so there, this is now second place, and, and uh, first is up ahead of us. So let's zoom ahead forward. Okay, we get by, obviously. We get by, and uh, let's go to second place behind us, the new second place. He's very close. So this is first and second place. Look at them weaving. Boom. He's done. I think this guy, number nine, even though he takes damage, keeps going. So just wanted some context as to how I got from seventh uh, up into fourth. Them all, actually, at this point, four. Which is, that's a boost in safety rating, too. So I'm just looking to get my open wheeled kind of up to where my driving level is now. And we have a lap car in front of us. This is the kind of like second, the second challenge was being comfortable on the brakes. I feel like now I am. We got first corner, first lap out of our, out of the way. And now it's just getting through lap traffic. All these people have had bad times. Um, so how much damage are they carrying? He was very kind to get out of the way. That's lovely. Thank you very much, whoever you are. What's his name? Rodrigo. Gentleman and a scholar. Although I do lock up into there, which is always fun when you are let by and then you slow down the guy behind you. I think he's carrying some pretty heavy damage because he's in my draft, uh, but cannot keep up. So, chances are he had a bad time. So, uh, sixth place is only 5.6 seconds, and we have buckets of laps left. So, and he's not putting in anything too crazy. He's only slightly ahead of me. There's a big puff of smoke there, so somebody locked up. So you can see George Herrera, who is now behind us. Hmm. So he had a little incident. The dinosaur man is now behind us, so we're up into sixth. Uh, sixth place, again. I'm just having a laugh here. This is great kind of stuff. So again, one, two, three, four, five, there's nobody is super duper far ahead of me. I'm off first place, only by 16 seconds. And there's only one reason that's happening. Everybody else is putting in faster laps than me. Pretty much everybody ahead of me is faster. But they're not putting in consistent laps. So they'll put in a 44, a 43, or sometimes even a 42. But then they'll have an appalling lap where they put in a 50.1, so. In fact, we're catching what is now fifth. He's only 4.9 ahead of us. And again, just trying to be as consistent as possible. And you can see those two, they're both they're right on top of each other there. So one's 4.9, one's 4.1. I think the Matson guy gets by. Is that his name? Yeah, Matson. Adam. Four one. You can see in the middle and to the left, uh, that was my fastest lap in 44.1. Which, I mean, I think that's pretty respectable. Considering I haven't put in a great deal of laps here. I know that's kind of two seconds down from what an actual respectable lap is. I can see where that evolution could happen. First, first, uh... For chicane, definitely. I can. There's there's at least a half a second there. Here, there's probably a whole second. I've seen people go in there. They're on the gas through the first, um, through the first rumbles, and then in there. I don't think I do that corner that much 
worse. Here, there definitely is. If you can hit that... Oh, that was actually a pretty good one. But if you can hit that, uh, that rumble strip on the inside, I, I think you could do it without going down into fourth. I have to just dab the brakes to get rotation. I don't know if that's the proper way to do it, but that's what I do. And here, if you, I've seen people break at the 50. 100%. I, I, the fellow that I watched last night, he was breaking just before the 50 board. Um, stabbing on the brakes, how you're able to stab and not lock them up at the same time is beyond me. Stabbing on the brakes and then turning in, and he was in fourth the whole way through, so, like, uh, I have to really let off the gas. There's tons of time where I'm not on the gas. Um, Parabolica, I think I'm actually not too bad. It's actually, it's technical, but it's as long as you get your in good. Breaking into the Parabolica, I'm a little early. Uh, but that's only because of stability and my braking ability. So here I'm braking in between 150 and 100 boards. And still not always getting it right. You can see the steering lock you have to put on when you get that wrong. It's very off-putting. Um, a lot of the time I'm thinking in my head, is it really maybe just better just to keep going? Again, last lap was a 144.4, so we're pretty consistent still. Um, Matson's just ahead of us. Now, what happened? How are we in fourth? Because we were in sixth. The two guys actually came into each other, and uh, those are those two that were, f I don't know if they're fairly close, or it was first that went off, or two of them went off. So we're up into fourth, which is like, that's pretty respectable. Fourth in my first real kind of real race trying here. We got a guy who's got a bad connection. I don't know who it is. I think it's Matson, maybe. So where is third? He's just ahead of us. Not too far ahead. We can see him. He's just up the road there. And I can tell you, because I've looked at this replay before, that he is pushing. You see, it is a 146 1. Again, he's a little better. First and second are battling it out. You can see that uh, there was just a lead change. I get that corner a bit wrong that time. Too far in. So there's a lead change at the front as well, which is interesting. And 2.9. Seems as though, I think this is the lap that I make a little mistake. So he put in one, a 146 and I caught up by a second. This guy passed us very early on. I do another little mistake, and then we lose all that time. So he lost a second, and I gained a second, and then I lost a second. And it's kind of back and forth. We're both not super clean drivers. Mine is mostly these first two chicanes. The first chicane and then Lesmos. You get quite good there. So again, we gain all that time that we lost to him in the other one, so. Through here, I'm a little less strong. I get a really good drive out of that. So you can see that big gap where I'm off the power. That really should be touching each other as soon as you hit those brakes. But I don't know what that feels like. So when I do do that, I usually go off into the sand. Learning to stay to the right later is the key to getting that corner. And I think that's how they can break at the 50 because they almost point their car out a little bit and they, and they really round off the corner. If you turn in too early, you're just not going to make the next right-hander. And here I'm breaking fairly late. I'm, do, I'm getting good drive. So 1.7 seconds. That's close. Or nearly. Um, I will say... These cars are not super duper heavy on draft, considering how long the straight is. When you're 1.6 or 7, you might get a tenth. If you're within a second, you're getting draft. It's just not its not super noticeable early. It's only at really, really high speeds. And I just completely bung up that corner. So we were 1.6 seconds on that straight. And we're now more like 3. So I lost a second and a half with that mistake. But he's still within striking distance. We only really have a couple laps left. We haven't been shown the white flag, so we have this one and at least one more. 
Again, trying to push a little bit now. And not like pushing my abilities, but the car is low on fuel and the tires, as far as I can tell, are not worn out. So I should, theoretically, be able to brake a little bit later and a little bit less than what I would normally. Trying to bed in that car as it tapers off in fuel. Should be able to, now it'll feel a little weird because the car is starting to lighten up. In fact, that bump under the bridge is a lot more noticeable. I get that a little wrong. So he's three and a half seconds away from me now. Again, he's not putting in flyers. You can see last lap he was at a 146 again. So he puts in really fast and then he's really slow. And according to my predicted this one, it's going to be slow because I had that 1.5 seconds. So it's at least going to be a 46. I do, again, get that corner quite good. We caught up a couple tenths. And I don't think I'm fast enough to pass him, even if I did get to him. I would be very nervous ruining my entire race for a single place, even if it is a podium position. So he's got some lap traffic up ahead of him, which is... I get that good that time. So again, we gained another half a second on him. He's dealing with some lap traffic. It's not going to slow him down, I don't think, but he does make a bit of an oopsie, eventually. I don't remember where it is, though. All I remember is... I think it's here, actually. Yeah, there he goes. I don't know. We'll have to take a look at the incidents, but I don't know that the lap traffic did that to him. And then as we go by, he's six, seven, eight, nine seconds back. And we are in third. Now, the last little bit of this is there is a lot of lap traffic. We got one, two, three. Three people between us and second. So that guy lets us go. That's great. Excellent. Thank you very much. We even said thanks on the thing, even though you're not going to see it show up here anywhere. I get a bit. Well, that was my last incident point. There it was. So I was hanging at three for the longest time there. So uh, just a little bit too hot into that corner. Again, trying to push the car as it goes. You see my windscreen is all kind of, or my helmet is all messed up. I don't know if there's tear-offs. I'm not used to that, so there might be. I don't have a button bound for tear-offs. If there is, um, it seems to dissipate a little bit um, as you drive on. But it still sort of stays there. I should really look that up. The biggest thing you can do for your vision inside of uh, anything with a halo is making sure to make that halo not visible. If you have actually... I've been around a Formula One car with a halo, but I've heard... I've obviously not sat in a Formula One car, though that would be amazing. I've heard that you can't really see that post in the middle. Um, it's difficult to show that in a camera, like visually, because you can't... You can't rep uh, reproduce how your eyes work, because your eyes are not, you're not a cyclops, right? You don't see like that. You see two images stitched together. That's why you can blink your eyes left or right and it actually moves the, moves what you're seeing. So visually, you don't see that when you're in the car, as much as I think people realize, when it, because it's that far out, it's actually, it's not technically a blind spot because your brain stitches the two images together so it kind of just disappears. This is the most harrowing moment now. I need to get by this guy and he's kind of letting me by but I don't I don't know if I hit him or not. I did get a warning about it. Um, I think I just clattered the corner really hard. Uh, he was letting me by. I wasn't really quick enough to do that on the inside. I've never passed anybody there on the inside so I didn't know how fast I needed to go. Should I go down into the third? So it was kind of an awkward moment. It could have been bad, though. That was a bit of a butt clencher. I'm not sure if this is the last lap. Hold on a second here. Oh, I think it is. Because I don't see first and second. They're all gone. So there it is. A podium place. I just continue on. I'm very nervous about finishing off and all this kind of stuff. So I'm slowing down here. Easing on the brakes and then breaking way offline. Okay, so pretty good. Let's take a look at incidents though. 
That should be interesting because there was a lot. Okay, let's take a look at incidents. Uh, I haven't looked through the incidents. I've watched the replays uh, a few times. Uh, there's a couple things that are pretty interesting here. I'm just hoping that there's not too many blinkers so that we can actually get this through this. I'm gonna do the far chase cam because these things are quick enough. Sometimes you need to see back a little bit. I've got it widened out a bit too so we can definitely see. So let's go ahead. We'll take a look at the first corner one in detail. Okay, so the guy ahead of me gets a really bad start. There's a couple of people who got bad starts. I'm just gonna stick here for a little bit. I wanna see what goes on in front of us. So you see first and second up there. So he's, oh, he takes himself out and then everybody starts colliding in with each other. I decide to go around and that actually gains me all those positions. Everything I gained at the start there was all cause of that. So let's actually take a look. Yeah, everybody's clattering in together. And then this guy eventually just gets, yeah, he loses his wing too. So that's, that's where all the time was gained for me, going around the outside. Uh, these are the two ahead of me. Oh, what was that? What the what? Whoa, hold on a second. No, 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 we need more story here. Story is happening. We need to go back. What happened here? Oh, okay. Okay, so the first guy goes off. This guy got into the grass a little bit. Did you see that? That little touch of the grass. And then, bunk, and he spins around. And then he goes inside of him. Loses his wing. And then this guy's like, well, there's a car inside of me. And then he just pushes forward. That guy goes forward and then goes off track because he doesn't have his wing, remember? It doesn't matter if we can see it. He doesn't have a wing. And then this guy gets in front of him, and then the guy who crashed into him is right ahead of him. So, this is some Xbox level stuff here. No offense to anybody, but you know what he's planning. That guy actually kind of blocks him, and he just says, nope, gone. <laughs> I mean, he completely kills himself. I think his race was mostly ruined anyway. So let's, uh, let's back up a little bit. So he's gone now. Uh, we've already seen that. Yeah. These guys both go off track. Lots of people taking the off track. Oh, no. Wow. That was a big one, too. Anybody hit him? Nope, but he does blink out. Is that ahead of us? No, this must be the second lap. Onto the inside. Wow. Unfortunate, and then kind of ruin everybody else's day. I said, no, I still think that's the first lap. Yeah, you're done, bud. Oh, oh, no. Oh, so unfortunate. So these are people all trying to limp back to the pits, basically, and they got no car left to do it. In the pits. This must be the next lap. Oh, bunk. And you're gone. Oh, no. He goes backwards. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, also, I want to apologize for the color of my car. Oh, when he hits somebody, this is just appalling. There I go. Okay. <laughs> That's what happened. That was like, oh, no. Hold on a second. I want to go back and look at that. I want to see where this guy comes from. So he comes, he's coming from behind here. So that blue guy is actually who ends up being in third later on in the race. So that's him up there. This guy just gets, he just is breaking too much. Gets himself, and he's going backwards. Now he's technically right now off track. We can't see, but he's off track. And let's, uh, let's move ourselves a little bit closer. Decides to pull forward. Doesn't check. This is why I use race labs. This is why, because I can look at the map and I know who's coming. Gets on the gas a little bit too much and he spins his back around. Boom! Takes that guy out. And then I'm coming along and I'm like, what in the hell is going on up there? Yum! And I thread them right through. And then this guy in the blue car, brake. You got him. The game doesn't disable brakes. He should be braking. I know what he's thinking in his head. 
He's like, I'll just leave off the brakes and I'll be able to spin the car around and see if I can keep going. And then uh, if we just kind of go to him and back up a little bit. Let's go back to Far Chase. Boom. And he spins around. He's like, oh, I won't put the brakes on. I'll come back like this. Boom. Next guy hits him. He flipped over, too. Wow. Wow, that was a big hit. And he's completely done for. Very rookie kind of stuff. Like, that's just appalling. Okay, this is... Oh, just getting it wrong there. Oh, no, oh, no. Since they changed the gravel, you can actually recover that. <coughs> um, this guy just getting that. A lot of people have trouble with this corner. I don't have any problem with that corner, I found. He's spinning around trying to get himself going again. Oh, man. What is what is going on here with these people? We got to look at that. There's some sort of story here. Is this ahead of us? Oh, this guy is this guy coming out of the pits? No. Okay, so white guy's clearly faster. White and red guy, I should say. Well, they're both kind of white and red, aren't they? He's being real dodgy, like he's all over the place. They both get through here actually quite cleanly. They both get away quite cleanly. Obviously they can race amicably here. But I think the white and red guy, the predominantly white guy, is holding this guy up. They're both not really good at driving. Like this kind of stuff or whatever is not really indicative of somebody who has good car control. Now, is this malicious? He's on the inside. He seems a bit miffed. Okay, let's let's back up. We can't actually see what's going on there. I don't. I don't know. It looks suspicious. I mean, obviously, that's not the line into that corner. You do not need to break. You don't need to turn at your brake marker. So, like, he's turning in. But this guy's also kind of drifting out. So they're kind of doing this. I mean, you know he's there. He passed them on the last corner. But this guy's, I think, more the aggressor here. Because he's really, he's pointing himself at that, at the chicane. And that's not really how you do that. You turn in, like, where that shadow is. Boom, and he just hits him. Now let's go back again. You can see his wheel. He really, really does move in. And then they just come together. I would put that on the white guy. First off, it's not technically his corner because the other guy has the inside line. And to be honest, I think he becomes worse for wear. I mean, they both have appalling flat spots. He's got no front tire, no front end. This guy, if he can hold it, if he just stays where he is, the car really kind of looks like it wants to straighten up. And you can see that left tire is going to grab a little bit. Is he going to lose his wing? Yeah, he loses his wing. So that's his race done. Okay, let's go back into Far Chase. <clears throat> Again, just appalling driving here. Yeah, he's done. Oh, he tries to continue on, even though he has no front wing. Oh, I think this was pretty high up. Oh, is he still going? Yeah, okay. What's this fella doing? Oh, blink. I was going to say, is that me? Holy crap. No, more blinks. Hmm, just rough on the curb. Oh, this is right ahead of us. Yeah, he's he. I, I couldn't tell if he actually was having an incident. And then he has to do the old reverse. That's how he ended so much. Far. He would have been better if he had clattered the wall a little bit. But now he's way behind. And then I think he has... No, he's okay there. 
I believe this is... Oh, this is behind us. They're still having accidents. Oh, it's Fernando Alonso's. Levery. And then he blinks out. And I think that's it. Okay, so that's not too bad. And I think those two that went out were from where we gained two positions in the middle of the race there. Those are those two guys fighting with each other. That was actually ahead of us, which is... Those are the guys who are putting in 43s, and that's what they're doing. Nonsense. So we went from 7th to 5th or whatever. That's what that was. I don't know where we lost. We lost a leader at some point, too. It was one of those many, many crashes. Anyway, quite interesting. Let's take a look at results. Okay, results. Let me move my fat head out of the way. Okay, so average lap time at 144.6, which is not really the best in the world. It's pretty slow. We are in the bottom of bottom splits here. Oh, I'm trying to move my own camera around instead of on the screen. So you can see um, we're at the bottom of bottom splits. Still, though, we had an I rating change of 0.78. I would say I'm probably not a bottom split guy. Just haven't got there yet. So, And then a 1.4, a 0.14 uh, safety rating change. We ended up in third, which is pretty good. Biggest winner. 78. Oh, wait, no, was that 78? 78, 78. I think first place 85 is the biggest winner and biggest loser. Let's go down to the bottom. 93 in both last positions there. So, yeah. Um, the splits in this have been interesting. The previous race to this, it was all over the place. The split was crazy. Um, it was like 0.2 all the way up to 2.7. I think there was fairly late at night, so there was only three splits, so there was just so many people hung together. So I think that's pretty good. I was 24 seconds off the lead, though, so like not really on pace with those two guys. But still, third place for one of my first races here. That's pretty good. I might keep trying to do Formula Lights. Um, so far, it's been really interesting. I'm enjoying it. Thanks for uh, joining me on this race. Feel free to subscribe and like if you're having a good time. And see you all next time.